Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matthew Glasser. Uh, I have some good news and some bad news. Uh, bad news is Carrie Lord felt like city council was a little bit more important than us today, so you're stuck with the very boring Sean Coleman and Troy Galloway doing your presentations. In addition to that, some great news, though, is that they didn't send me their bios, which means that I get to divulge some secrets about them instead of their normal presentations. So in Troy Galloway's case, I'm sure you know from Watt County, God's country, but as he went to Spusu, he was very regretful of that fact and always longed to be a Georgia Tech. Y'all ask him to this day, he's going to deny it, but he very much wanted to be a Georgia Tech. Sean Coleman has not bragged about this at all yet, but he is an accomplished director, writer, and producer of the next Disney Ballet on Ice. <laughs> so, I <laughs> so, I believe that Troy will be starting us off. So, our secreted Georgia Tech fan yeah. will be starting us. Hopefully, we don't get the virus in the city of Atlanta. So. working. Hey everybody, uh, my name's Troy, as you guys may or may not know. Sorry that Kerry couldn't come, he told me this morning at 8.30, so I made some slides for him, so if it's bad, you can blame him. Um, so the, the goal of Renew Atlanta is to really just provide mobility in the city of Atlanta, bring it back up to a level of serviceability, um, and then go from there and bring it up to the state of art. Uh, about January of last year, the football host committee met with the city of Atlanta and talked about, oh, we got some big events coming up. We're like, well, we know. And they're like, well, we want to do some crazy things like shut down Marietta for all weekend. We want to do all these other stuff for three days. The Super Bowl is going to be a 10-day event where we're going to close everything from north side all the way over to Centennial Olympic Park. So we started thinking about this, and we, we put together a special event committee that included, it started off with about six or seven people and grew to be about 45 to 50 people that met pretty regularly and it was from fire departments, it was multiple engineering companies that were in here, um, transportation people, everybody like that. And we, we brought in, we had some success, success up in uh, Cobb Parkway with the new stadium. And we're like, we really need to get the police officers out of the road, and we really need to let the signals take over. Um, so uh, CAP, they got Kimberly Horn, who's in here, and they did a special event traffic plan. Um, they really pushed it out there. And for our first event, which was birthday bath, with very little fine-tuning or anything like that, we went from, in 2016, a 90-minute egress to a 45-minute egress. And this was the first event ever held, anything like that. So you guys have heard me talk last year, two years ago, when I was at the Georgia World Congress Center, about how we needed to upgrade technology. At that time, we were all, it was just tactics. We had no communication to any signals around when we tried to pull traffic, we had to get the police officers on the phone and say, guys, you guys are not doing your intersection correctly, why you're in flash, why are the pedestrians going to get hit by cars, stuff like that. So with GDOT's help, GDOT rolled out max view to most of the signals in the city. So about 300 signals downtown, midtown, in the surrounding area, we got communication and we had the ability to really be able to push plans. Um, so this started off with, in 2016, we had some flush plans on Northside Drive which really helped traffic, we were able to pull off about 20 police officers. And so for the first event in Mercedes-Benz, we said we're not going to have one signal in flash and we're not going to have any police officers in the roadway. So this was able to be done very quickly, very easily. We made plans and we, we at this Renew Atlanta, we made a little office where we can actually work all the events remotely. Um, so where we were taking 10 people to do an event, we've got it down to more three people People are working cameras, people are working max view, and really just making a difference in the traffic. Um, for the first event, we ended up going from, when, when I worked there, about 20th in the NFL in ingress and egress for an event, down to first for the first event. It slowly got, that's all done on people's saying, oh, yeah, the traffic was good today, and they were comparing it to the last event. By mid-year, we were back up to about 16th, 17th, but they were comparing it to the week before. Um, so we're starting to pull together a lot more data so we can actually compare the data from 2017 to 2016 and actually see what the egress is looking like. So on top of that, 
we, we worked with GDOT again to get eyes in the sky. So it's nice if you can push a plan, but if you don't know what's actually going on at the roadway, it's pointless. So what we really started doing is we rolled out about an additional 35 to 40 cameras just in the downtown grid. So any major route where we were pushing traffic, where we had flush plans, where we were trying to pull the pedestrians and just make sure they're doing the correct thing, police officers are on the side of the street, we put a camera. So now when we're saying there's a backup, we can identify where it's at and we say, well, it's because either the officer has stepped out in the road, maybe a car has broken down, and we were able to reroute traffic and actually visually see it. And then when we're seeing a ramp back up or something like that, we contact people at GDOT or contact other people and get it fixed on the fly instead of just waiting. It's like, all right, next, next week we don't need to do that. So we're able to do real-time events. On top of that, we really wanted to start getting real analytics. So we've used a new company called Moby. So it's a Bluetooth technology. They actually came in and did this on their own as a complete pilot. So on top of just giving us travel time, which is what we've had, anybody can really give us travel time, this is giving us analytics of how long it takes you to get to your parking lot, how long does it take you to get to a ramp. And we're able to set this up throughout the city, and we're able to actually see. So from this, this is the report that they generate from the College Football National Championship. So we're pumping volume data into it at the same exact time. So there's 11,000 people that drove into the event. So they pull that data out of just the background information, and they actually say, well, they came in, we pinged them, they stayed in the area for the event, and they left. So you're able to actually see when those cars came in, how long they tailgated for. And so you can see this is the graph of how people arrived. So people were arriving seven, eight hours early for the college football national championship game. They had plenty of other events. There's plenty of tailgating, everything like that. And if this was a live website, I'm actually able to click on each one of those bars and see when those people showed up and when they left. I don't know if that really means anything, but I'm able to do it. Um, the, the other neat thing, it, it doesn't show very well in this graph, but that bottom graph is actually a volume to speed graph. So the darker the graph is the more volume. So normally when you see it starts getting dark, you're still pumping a lot of volume, but then it gets darker and darker and your speed goes down because you're getting congested. Um, so we're able to see exactly how they're moving, and we're able to do intersection to intersection, and we're about to broaden this to cover almost all of the Atlanta, and we're putting cell phone data on top of it so we can really pinpoint where we're having our issues in real time. Um, another neat thing that we've done in the city of Atlanta, it's a live earth is what the program is called. Let me see if I can hit play. So this is a real-time simulation. It gets... Enric's data, we're able to pinpoint all the MARTA buses, everything like that. Um, you can do lightning strikes, you can do gunshots, you can do the weather, and you can replay it back and forth. Um, what's really neat about this, I wasn't able to do it because, yet again, the city of Atlanta's network kind of was down. Um, we're able to put the, the Genetech cameras, which are the police department cameras, all those are tied into the system, and because they record their video, when I click on that, and that bottom bar, we're able to rewind as long as we want. So I can click on a camera from an event and then rewind it to the day of the event and replay what was actually going on when we saw an issue, when it gets red, and like that. And you're able to see where the MARTA buses were. You're able to see all these different techniques, and you can put so much more analytics on top of that. So that's a, that's a program we've been testing out for about a, a year now, and it's really showed us some benefits. Um, another neat thing that DPW has started doing with GE in Georgia Power. So there's 200 GE smart nodes that have been installed. So these are nodes that have two cameras, front and back facing. They see about 330 degrees. So all these, um, they're in Buckhead, they're on North Side, North Ave, downtown area. Um, they're using for gunshot detection. They're using it for counting the cars where they're misparked, where they're doing all this stuff, and really doing real-time analytics. And it's also lowering the cost of the power consumption to DPW. So they're seeing a cost benefit of doing this and at the same time being able to connect and do all those different analytics with it. With that, so our future technology we're looking to roll out. Everyone's heard of PTV and everything like that, but there's a new system they have called Optima where you can do a full city simulation in less than a minute. So you're able to say, here's our whole network, here's our traffic, and you're saying, we're going to close this road. What do you need to do with that? 
So we're looking at testing that out and then also streetlight data, pumping this volume in real time into the simulations and actually seeing where you can go with it. But with streetlight, what's neat about it, it's a little bit different from some cell phone data because you're able to draw a little zone around like a parking lot and say, people that were parked in that parking lot, how long did it take them to go wherever they, wherever they ended up? And you're able to do origin, destination, and travel time off of that. Uh, other neat things we're doing is a flare. We actually have one installed on this Hawk signal right out here. Um, but we're looking at doing this around Sunil Olympic Park. It's a passive ped detection. So if a pedestrian just walks up to the, the signal, it automatically detects them. If they're in the crosswalk, we can extend the green time. So when we're having 70,000 people in an event, we can go ahead and flush those pedestrians through. Uh, Mile Vision, we're going to be testing that out, grid smart, getting more detection in the downtown area so we can actually set up some real-time analytics and actually see what the health of the signals are really doing. And applied information, we're doing the Glance product, and we're going to be working with some transit organizations and actually getting transit priority throughout the city. And that's really it. And I'll, I'll save some questions. I've got to give Sean his time. So, Sean, you can take it away from now. My name is Sean Coleman with Kimley Horn, uh, and, and I was one of the leads for DTOP and RTOP for the Special Events Zone. And as Troy mentioned, it was just an amazing partnership um, this program was. Uh, first of all, I've just been saying this to everybody for the past six months or so, this has been one of the most rewarding experiences in my career. It's just been so much fun and cool to kind of like be in the thick of it um, and working with some awesome people that you know, we were nervous about the conversations with APD about, hey, I know y'all been doing this for 25 years and, and y'all say y'all know how to move traffic, but let's let the signals do some of the work uh, alongside of y'all. They were all fantastic. These conversations were, the fact that people were brought to the table together has been a very energizing experience. And the partnership starts with GDOT and the RTOP and DTOP programs, DTOP uh, through Jacobs. But GDOT leadership as well at all levels was, was bought into this process to doing to bring synergy, if you will, to event management in, in downtown Atlanta. Um, Central Atlanta Progress was instrumental in getting everybody to the table in this planning process. And of course, we're New Atlanta. Y'all get stuff done. Y'all get stuff done. Um, the city, police department, and then the World Congress Center, which is the third or fifth largest convention center in the country. Um, and then they manage all the traffic for, used to be the Dome, now Mercedes-Benz. And then the Atlanta Football Host Committee which is the committee responsible for not only that game, but the Super Bowl, and then eventually the Final Four. And they said of all, and then they managed previous events for Atlanta, they said of all the events that they managed, this has been by far the best from a collaborative effort. They've had a great time just on the phone with them the other day. They're like, let's get the band back together. We've got the Super Bowl coming up. So it's like, it's just really, really energizing um, environment. So Troy, I'm gonna run through this quick because he stole my thunder. But essentially, the preparation for that day, it was, it was a, a lot that went into it, but also crammed into a pretty short amount of time. It wasn't until about June or so, Mercedes-Benz was opening in August. It wasn't until about June when it's like, we need to do a downtown special events playbook that compiles all the different, every single venue had their own thing going on. They sort of talked to each other, but not really. And then not only that, they had, they had uh, traffic plans, but then when you talk to them about it, they're like, oh no, we don't do that. No, we don't do that either. No, that's garbage. It's like, well, well, what do, you, what do you do? So um, it, it was a planning effort to bring that together and, and create a document that's like, okay, you have an event of this size at this venue, you do this. Event of this size at this venue, you do this. What if you have an event of this size here, an event of this size here, what do you do? But then, like a lot of planning documents, we don't want this thing to sit on a shelf, right? So CAP was actually really instrumental in saying, we want this to become an operational playbook where we actually implement it. But that went from, it was supposed to be just the sprint to the August uh, preseason game. And then the only other event that it was supposed to lead up to was the College World Championship. But because of the success, partners with GDOT, uh, RTOP and DTOP and Renew, we managed all the Falcons games and all the Atlanta United games. And y'all manage all the Hawks games now because of the success of the playbook. <clears throat> Troy mentioned prior to 2017, there were some limited special event timings on Northside and limited on DTOP as well. But speaking more from the DTOP side, I mean, they were more kind of on the peripheries coming into downtown. We knew in the core, police took over, there's nothing we can do. Um, and no, no real coordination with the police and venue. So if, if we didn't have the max time deployment in early 2017, the max new deployment, and have a software with that capability, we wouldn't be able to get done what we, what we do, all the cool like tricks that we do with, from a signal timing perspective. It's pretty tricked out. I'll explain some of those tricks in a minute. Um, <clears throat> wouldn't have been able to do with previous uh, versions of software. 
And then the 4G communications, my boy Justin Hatch and his, his crew, within a month, I mean, we had, what, 20 to 30% communications downtown, and it was spotty. It was all point-to-point -point wireless, and it was actually run by the police departments, and so they would just take over whenever they wanted. It won good. Boom, Justin goes out there within a month. We got, we got 4G communications to 150-plus signals. Um, it, it, tremendous. Again, we would not have been able to provide this level of active management without the max time and the communication. <clears throat> and then in the summer, we tested the special event timings, uh, the birthday bash, which is it's just crazy. It's just a big old block party that starts the park and then makes its way to Phillips Arena. And, um, you know, we convinced them. And like you said, we only implemented about basically 5 to 10% of the plan that we actually have now. But we're like, just give us a chance. And the police saw it. They loved it. Um, and we knew that we were on to something. Stakeholder engagement, I already mentioned these, but you can see here, if you're not super familiar, Mercedes-Benz with the big Mercedes logo. Georgia Dome doesn't exist anymore. All those giant buildings up there, that's the World Congress Center. You got Phillips Arena right over there to, to y'all's right. That's in the top 10 venues in the world in terms of ticket sales, like, um, you know, that size venue. Um, Centennial at the park. Uh, basically, a special event day is a normal day in Atlanta. DDOT, um, so not only we talked about RTOP and, and DTOP, but, but the TMC from a navigator perspective, District 7. So we worked with um, the ITS group about programming certain signs that said, go to certain exits when you're coming to the game um, so that we can, we can funnel people in down the routes that we wanted. But then not only that, um, Matt, did we ever figure out what, what they said, the, the signs? Was it, yeah. abandon all hope ye who enter downtown? <laughs> That's pretty much what they said. I don't know what they said. But they said something to the effect of three or four days before the game. If you didn't have a reason to be downtown, do not be downtown. Um, starting at about 2 p.m. And so that, that helped, and that message was pushed out in the media. And then, of course, you know, an ice storm kind of helped to keep people away. But a um, lot of coordination going on at, at, at multiple levels. Renew Atlanta, again, y'all get stuff done. We got camera here. How many cameras do we have now in downtown? Is it like 40-ish? We're Scott. We got a lot. Um, had zero in August. Now we have a lot. Um, the blank out signs right here, I'll show a little video that shows those in action that, that reinforce some strategic turn locations that we have, turn restrictions that are only on during special events and only on during certain size special events. Department of Public Works, uh, ride share, it's always fun dealing with ride share. Um, Mercedes-Benz has a partnership with Lyft. We were able to convince them, so that's COP and then MOK to the left. The stadium is literally just, just over here to the right. This is egress. Um, you see the cones up there, that's blocked off, but there's a tent that you can barely see because it's dark. That's the lift tent. That is literally right outside the front door of the stadium. You walk right out, there's a bunch of lift folks there. Um, and actually for, um, for the college football game, they had COP shut down from Marietta to Andrew Young, which is where this camera is, for rideshare only. You know, that, that's all well and good. Um, it's getting better every game, especially games where there's people that keep coming back, season ticket holders. But for events like this, people walk out, they're like, I want a car now, right here. Wherever I am, I want, if you just go over there, no, I want it right here. I'm standing in the middle of Northside Drive, give me a car. It's, it's, it's kind of chaos to deal with, but that's, that's what we deal with, manage chaos. Ways, we worked with ways to pre-program in things like closures, time-based turn restrictions, which are essentially, if someone's driving up Northside Drive, we don't want them to turn you know, left or right. We want them to keep going all the way to the interstate. And, Waze doesn't yell at them if people want to make that turn, but it doesn't give that option within their algorithm. And we have a lot of those. And I wish this was some super awesome technical process that we do and we get into the algorithm and change things. It's a Google Doc. And there's this guy who's the, like, the head Waze user uh, named Speed Racer who just comes in and, and programs it all for us. Um, I don't know his name. As a volunteer, though. He's a volunteer. I just get an email from Speed Racer once a week. Where's my Google Doc? So, um, yeah, it's, it's not very sophisticated. And the Atlanta Host Committee, they're, they're awesome. Um, and the traffic plan development, like, like Troy said, it's officers working with the signal timing. And, and the way that we were able to convince them was, look, we're not replacing y'all. Yeah, we were able to limit some of the staff, but the core staff, the World Congress Center Police Department that, that, that operates all this, we're enhancing y'all's ability to do your job. You don't have to worry about traffic control anymore. You don't have to worry about coordinating with all the signals uh, around you. You worry about pedestrian safety. You worry about vehicle safety. 
Pedestrians, you keep them contained until they're, they're given their walk and flashed on walk. Vehicles, don't let them block the box. So it's another kind of reinforcement of the, of the timing. Minimal signals in flash. We have no signals in flash now for ingress, for egress. We have about 10 or so, but that's because we contraflow MLK, the reverse, the reverse direction. So those have to be in flash. Work with them on road closures. We talked about the turn restrictions. Down here at the bottom, <clears throat> that's Marietta. Coming away from downtown, that's Ivan Allen. Basically, the whole point of the plan is to not let people go to Ivan Allen. Because if you let people do whatever they want, they're going to go to the William Street interchange no matter what. It, there's 15 ways to get out of downtown. I don't want to go to William. Everybody goes to William Street. It, there's, an inter, there's, a, there's an exit two blocks down. No, I want to go there, even though it, it, it's queued up you know, beyond all imagination. And so here we're telling people you can't turn left or right. You keep going down Marietta because you're going to hit north side eventually, and then you can get to any interstate you want from there. Um, the Contraflow, MLK, you see the arrows coming at us. It's usually inbound, um, westbound one way. And so uh, that's usually one of the first things that's a trigger event for, for egress to dump out the red deck, which is 2,000, 2,500 spaces, to dump out the gulch area <clears throat> um, is, what, is what that's used for. Police locations, ride, ride share locations. So this is the plan, the play, um, which is kind of crazy. But I'm just going to zoom in on a couple things. Oh, that is really faint. That is weak. Oh, man. That is... Basically, okay, just a couple things. You can see the orange closures around the park. We shut down Marietta for the whole weekend. It actually worked out great. I want to do that for every game now, but can't do that. Um, you see COP is shut down from right, right around the park. That actually didn't happen. So that was part of our plan, and then it never happens. So that was some of the things we had to manage while we were, while we were working traffic. Um, we have a rideshare-only corridor. We have where all the police are. And another cool thing about this map is it shows where all the turn restrictions are, where there's a police officer saying you can't turn here, and where all the turn restrictions are that we programmed into ways that there is no officer, but, but we keep people pushed up north side, keep them pushed up Marietta, Lucky, down MLK, down Mitchell, down to the south on north side, Ellis and John Portman. And then here, I know y'all can't see this as well, so that is um, Ivan Allen and Williams. We have people coming up to Turner. If they just go up two blocks, they get to Linden, they get literally to the exact same off-ramp or on-ramp that they would get to at Williams. Everybody wants to turn on Williams. So that's part of what, what we have to do is man keep people going, manage that traffic. That's one of the reasons why we now have these um, turn restriction signs that pop up now, blank out signs, only on during events. Signal timing is tricked out, y'all. It's awesome. If you're a signal timing geek, this is where it's at. Um, again, when it comes to max time and max view, we would not have been able to do this without it. Multiple ingress and egress patterns for different scenarios. Uh, pedestrian scrambles by time of day, which I'll show a quick video. Ped pulses, where we're in ped halts are kind of the same thing, but where we're stopping all traffic, all directions are, are up for pedestrians, pulsing them for about four minutes and two minutes of vehicles, four minutes, two, mi two, two minutes vehicles. And pet holds is where it's like, we need 15 minutes of pedestrians because it's nuts. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll push that down as well. Phase holds, we got a certain direction we need to hold, let's say coming out of the aquarium on, on uh, Lucky. Resting green flush plans, these arrows here, these are some of the key corridors where we have, we have a pre-program where it just turns everything green. It's like the Italian job, you know what I'm saying? For any of y'all that have seen that movie where it's just everything is green. And... Um, Y'all aren't laughing at the younger ones. I'm not really laughing at that one. That's an older movie. Um, <clears throat> everything is green. That mimics what the officers call a hard pull. I need a hard pull on Marietta. Boom, rest in green. Because that's what they would, they would used to say that over the, over the radio. We need a hard pull, a hard pull. And, you know, 10 of them would be waving people through while stuff was in flash. We're controlling that now. We're the ones in, in charge of, of making sure that works. And then the action sets. We got these action sets that are just like all sorts of different scenarios. Basically, you push one button, and boom, this 150 things happen at once. Ingress and egress for Phillips. Ingress and egress for Mercedes Benz. College football. Turn on, turn on all blank out signs. Turn on all these uh, rest and green. And then we have one that's basically, we're done. Press this button, it all goes back to normal. Um, so a lot of stuff pre-programmed. All right. This is this is awesome. So, <clears throat> COP and Marietta, even though it's not right in the front door, that's just the critical intersection in the whole system. And what we did early on, this is, I mean, we did this for the birthday bash, and this is kind of what got them excited. 
was we did a pet scramble, but only by time of day. So it's only on during certain size events and only on um, during, those, during those actual plans. And so it's two times speed, so people are kind of walking funny. Um, <clears throat> but you can see, I mean, pe the, the police officers are working it. They're telling folks to cross diagonal. When it's a Falcons game and people know it now, everyone is crossing diagonal. It's awesome. You see the blank out sign on up there telling the vehicle do not turn right. That'll turn off when this pet scramble is done. That's also never on during a normal normal week. <clears throat> um, and one of the reasons why this pet scramble is so effective, it is not just for pets. It is for vehicles too. We would never, there are so many right, I mean, this is going towards the stadium and going towards all the decks. Marietta would back up for three miles because people can't turn right because of all the pets. COP would back up past Ivan Allen because people can't turn right because of all the pets. No one could, used to be able to turn left on permissive. By controlling the pedestrians, and then the, you see the officers go into all four corners and keeping the pedestrians back, it's, it's efficient for PEDS, safer for PEDS, and more efficient for the vehicles. All right, <clears throat> this is crazy. Y'all, uh, this is not the national championship. This is the Atlanta United game from a couple of weeks ago where it broke the third attendance record that it set, the, the highest attended Major League Soccer game in history, 75-something um, thousand, 72, 75,000. So a lot of people, y'all, basically national championship level. Behind us is, is the um, Vine City Marta Station, and so this is right out of the gates. And we do pedestrian holds here. And this is 10 times speed. And they just keep coming. They just keep on coming. And they keep flo flowing out of the gate. And any time we stop them, you're going to see, see it start backing up. But then... So the police officers aren't, aren't out there having to control, but then you're going to see them come back in the frame. They're going to wait for, once they get their, their countdown, they know they need to start working. So here they go, countdown came up, and they stop. Little car goes, boom. Vehicles, 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 vehicles. just keep going, keep going. Have a little chit chat. Um, <laughs> come back, and then gets that guy through, and then boom. <laughs> And y'all see them keep coming from the gates over there, too? I mean, it's just nonstop for about 30 minutes, 30, 45 minutes. That's one of the reasons why we're building a pet bridge there, right? <laughs> but even so, it's, it's still going to be, it's still insanity. We got a training program now. So basically, a normal event, a Falcons, a United, a Hawks game, it's, it is a well-oiled machine. It is 90% pulling levers and pressing buttons like at the right time. The game ends. Run a pet hold run this flush plan, turn to this, uh, turn to weekend plan 40 after about an hour. I mean, it's very scripted. So we have folks that go through training to do that. We got a small army now between Kimley Horn Jacobs for New Atlanta that can work an event. But that ain't what happened in the national championship. If a normal event is 90% prescribed and 10%, you know, you got to do some things on the fly, it was, this was basically in reverse. <clears throat> so a normal game, you have Mercedes-Benz, you have World Congress Center, and you have City Hall, where Renew Atlanta is. And we basically have two, we're, we can get it done with two operations center. Up here, that is the basement, the bowels of World Congress Center. That's where all the security is and all of their cameras. They have hundreds of cameras around, and, and, but that's where their police headquarters is as well. And we, after a few games, we, we used to have somebody staffed there. It is too crazy. It is too chaotic. I'm like, hey, can we... Uh, do a face hold there, and they're like, we got a code 13 on North Side Drive, da, da, da. and I'm like, they, they don't care about nerdy old me about traffic. So we, we, we needed to separate ourselves from there. All traffic is, renew, is, is managed out of Renew Atlanta, and we have a police officer liaison, and that's, that's my girl Timmy. She's the, be, she's the best of all of them. And she has a direct radio access to all the officers in the field and to all the leadership at World Congress Center. Um, so if an officer sees something that we need to fix, we'll do it. If we see something that an officer needs to fix, we'll, we'll get them to do it. So it's been great. For the national championship game, we made a decision about halfway through the week. So January 8th was a Monday. When did Donald Trump decide he was coming? Was it Wednesday or Thursday before? Yeah. So that changed the game. Um, but quite frankly, what, the first thing that it, that it did was we decided that we were going to manage out of the G.TMC because they were going to shut down all navigator remote access. That includes, even though Renew Atlanta is a public agency, that's still a re remote access. 
It turns out that was the best decision anyway. Um, it is our recommendation moving forward for all major events that aren't your typical Falcons United be managed out of the team or have some semblance of management out of the TMC because all the changes we had to make on the fly, all the access we needed to cameras and all of that, we needed the speed of the, of the TMC. And we needed Matt Glasser. And he was like the orchestrator, just like running around. Got me, got me donuts, fetch me my coffee. That's right. Two creams next time, buddy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we also had the JOC, the JOC, the Joint Operations Center. Is that yeah, sure. Um, that's at Atlanta, uh, or not their police headquarters, but one of their big, uh, their v video integration center. And that's where they have police, fire, FBI, Secret Service, and Paul Denard. Uh, Paul Denard, basically, he was in control. But that's where District 7 was. So we had, we had lots of different coordination um, going on. So here's our timeline. We're about to step you through the fun of the national championship game. So like I said, it was definitely a marathon leading up to that. Every game we got better, every game we tried something new, and then, and then it all kind of culminated into this. So we began monitoring ingress at noon. The game was at 8.30 that night. <clears throat> Staff at G.TMC, a handful of us were there at the TMC. I mean, it was a 14, 16 hour day, but it was it was good stuff. Um, like I mentioned, District 7 at the Jock and D-Top and R-Top boots on the ground. That, this was led by Chris Baglisi with Jacobs. For most events now, like Troy said, two or three people, we got it done. We can get it all done remotely with cameras. We're good to go. We needed those boots on the ground, even though we have 30 or 40 cameras. There's just so much going on that we needed that, that communication. So that's another recommendation of ours for bigger events to always have folks on the ground <clears throat> providing us information. And we were anticipating closures for POTUS at 6.15. Supposed to land around then or 6.30 up at Dobbins Air Force Base, but that's all we knew. They're not going to give you the route for obvious reasons. We just knew that closures were coming. We just do what we got to do. Get people there basically before that happens was our, was our goal. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team um, from 12 to 5. Um, it was awesome. Everything was great. We were getting people there. People were tailgating, so that means they were already there. I think ingress was, was going great. About 7, 7.15, we're like, something funny's happening on the north side. They're like, the police are really active. <laughs> they're out in the street telling pedestrians to go to the other side of the street away from the stadium. Oh, whatever. Uh, we don't know what that's all about. It's not our problem. Um, everything is awesome. Well, what was happening was this guy. <laughs> this guy. It was, it, Secret Service, basically an hour before, an hour before it was supposed to happen, said, we're shutting this whole thing down. Northside and Ivan Allen, two of our top four biggest corridors uh, for, for special events management, closed. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. Um, Northside and Ivan Allen, this is your timeline, by the way. Northside and Ivan Allen, um, they said they were going to start allowed because we were just like, this is not acceptable. Um, they said they were going to start pumping 20 cars at a time. I don't know if I ever actually saw that, though. I mean, they might have gotten 100 cars through total. But it, for all intents and purposes, that thing shut down at 5.15. Uh, before 6, they shut down gate 1 um, because that was where uh, POTUS was coming in. And the PEDs were being pushed away from Mercedes-Benz, but that actually happened before. And it literally, I mean, I, I looked online and I just put national championship weight in Google, and all sorts of articles popped up about borders on chaos outside and fans waiting hours irate um but it's true luckily we got them there we got them there but people did wait like two or three hours their people were ticked off because not only shutting down gates secret service took over all security but we're just as happy as it can be in the tmc they re-shut it down. Essentially, it was shut down at 6.06. <clears throat> then, then they started, we started, we basically just were sitting back watching all the navigator cameras. All the ramps started being shut down, all up 75. And then POTUS was on the interstate at, at uh, 6.23, so we landed right before then at Dobbins Air Force Base. And within 10 minutes, he was downtown. So it's a heck of a commute for a Monday. It was a 10-minute 10, 10 commute. 10-minute <laughs> commute from Marietta to downtown. And we were able to sneak some footage, footage of the motorcade, but uh, this, <laughs> Secret Service may take me out, but I uh, just found this online. It's awesome. 
Pretty soon after that, Interstate was reopened, Gate 1 was reopened, um, North Side was reopened. Again, the game starts at 8.30. This is 6.48. Insanity ensued for the next 45 minutes. We threw every trick that we could at the book of the system. Flush plan here, phase hold here, pet hold here. Just, it was insanity. And again, Matt was just up there just directing it all. Um, pure insanity. And by 7.33, we had visual confirmation of clear roads. That's a full hour before game time. Um, pol the police are fantastic at, at certain, at, it's, they've been an amazing partner, but if it was just police control everything in flash, it, it, it could have been pretty disastrous leading up, up to the game. And then pregame begins. <clears throat> and this, this is a little hard to hear, but this is essentially the beginning, it's a phone recording, the TV. It's the beginning of the broadcast. So listen to the announcer and what they say. Frigid outside and streets are eerily quiet. To us, that's actually like a victory, that the streets were quiet a full 30 minutes before game time. We got people there. We did our job. We got them there. We got them to the stadium, not necessarily in the stadium. All right. <clears throat> it's just part of the timeline, man. Come on. So at about 10.43, um, I made that time up, by the way. This was the situation. I didn't care. I was, I was focused on traffic. Ten minutes after midnight, this was the situation. I'm sorry. Uh, the first time I've seen that again. What? I'm just, it's a timeline. This is, this is history, y'all. This is history. Next One more time? No, no. Um, so that was game over. About 30 minutes after that, the champion ceremony ended at Mercedes-Benz. So we had two egresses. We had drunk, sad Georgia fans. 30 minutes later, drunk, happy Alabama fans. So two, two egresses. And remember, it doesn't just start at, at midnight or at, at 12.10. They got to get to their cars. They got to get to the intersection to, to pandemonium across the street. <clears throat> By a little after one, we, MLK Contraflow being removed is a good indicator. This event was different. A lot, a lot of the decks weren't full because they were used by staff. But at the same time, it's a good indicator that we're over the hump from an egress perspective because that's the big quarter that we're pumping normally four or 5,000 cars out. Um, it was removed uh, 40 minutes after the second egress. And then officers were pulled from the street. Northside, Marietta, COP, Mitchell, visually confirmed clear. This is 70, 75,000 plus people that were just kind of hanging around. There's a Kendrick Lamar concert at, during halftime. Um, so we got a little over an hour, an hour if you count the second egress. Things were clear. Now, remember what I said? <clears throat> that people want to go to Ivan Allen and they want to go to Williams if, if you give them a chance? That's all, it's, it's in our script, literally. When officers leave, Ivan Allen will become a mess for 20 minutes and you do two resting green flush plans to flush them out because everybody will like, oh, Ivan Allen, yeah, and they go straight to it. So we got to flush them out and then we're done. So less than two hours, downtown is, is back to normal after a national championship game. <clears throat> so here's some data. Stole this from my boy, Matt. ATSPM data. This is a Falcons game versus the Cowboys during the season, a game that we managed, national championship game. This is Northside Drive coming southbound, the intersection just to the north of Ivan Allen. You can see that the volume tick, 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 ticked up. But three hours before the game here versus here, we were pumping more, more cars through. And even before that, we were pumping more cars through than the same time for a normal Falcons game. So that shows there were people still on the streets. But you notice the drop down. What time is that? Five? Five fifteen? What happened then? That guy. Boom. <laughs> Destroy the corridor. <clears throat> we ran a Ritus analysis recently. So Troy has all sorts of sweet toys and tricks and doodads. It's awesome. Uh, we also used the um, GDOT contract that has uh, Ritus is the visualization software for all probe data. Using NREX here, all sorts of different probe data sources. <clears throat> and we did a, a comparative analysis of, we picked the Falcons playoff game, the last, basically the last game at the Georgia Dome. So the last game that wasn't managed by the collective us. Um, 
<clears throat> and so our routes are ingress is coming in from north side to the north and south. Obviously, coming from the north is a lot longer, and then egress is basically basically the same. So y'all work with me here. It's a little, little hard to orient yourself, but essentially, black is the Falcons playoff game. Red is the College Football National Championship. This is ingress, southbound, northbound. So pay attention to southbound, the 3.5 miles. That bar, that's when the game started. That's when the game started. So you can see for that two hour window, I mean, we're looking at 30, 35, 40 minute, um, 40 minute ingress for the Falcons game at the Dome. We were, we were nice and steady until about, oh, I don't know, 5.30, what happened then? That guy. <laughs> but even then, it, it, it was manageable and then it dropped, but then you can see here at about 6.30, it, it dropped. That's where we went crazy with all of our flush plans and stuff and, and really, really helped out there. <clears throat> so this is egress. Timelines are combined, so it's a little confusing because one is actually in the middle of the night. But the red is when the national championship game ended. Black is when that, that playoff game ended uh, for the Falcons. So two hour window, this is north side heading north. You can see, you can just see the difference, right? You can see the difference in here. It's a managed egress that's about 30 minutes to 45 minutes. It's gonna have its peak and then it goes down. Um, and then this is Ivan Allen. This tells a cool story too because Ivan Allen um, in the beginning in the red, there's not much going on there. It's not only because we have Hive and Hound like shut down so no one will get to it, it's also because people are still getting to their car. It's gonna take a while to get to that corridor. But then we have that big time peak right at one, and then at like 1.30 or so, that's when um, the officers are, are pulled, and so it's still pretty busy, but then we run the flush plan at two, and then it's, then it's all normal. And then for the Falcons game, it just, it never recovered. That's the two hour mark, and we still have an hour to go before before Ivan Allen was, and again, Ivan Allen wasn't necessarily controlled. Actually, was, is that when they used to contraflow Ivan Allen too, I think? A little bit. Yeah. So, <clears throat> what's next? Bring the band back together, Super Bowl. Same host committee is responsible for the Super Bowl. They're also going to be responsible for the Final Four. And they said to, to, to all the partners, to GDOT, to Renew, to, to the top programs, they're like, that was awesome, y'all. <laughs> Let's do it again. Um, and Super Bowl is going to bring a whole other thing of challenges. Um, I don't know. There's a 300-foot perimeter outside of the stadium that has to be shut down. That means Northside Drive has to be completely shut down for a whole week. It's going to be awesome. Um, so there's all sorts of different things that we're going to we're, we're working with. Uh, we're going to be working with that group on to to get to that point. But it's an exciting time for Atlanta. Um, like I mentioned, <clears throat> this you can see how massive of an effort this was. No way any one person, any one company, any one organization could have done it. This, everybody had to pull their weight. I mean, when, when you look at the overall roster, 30, 40 people plus put significant effort into, into this event and making it a success, or not just the event, the entire season. Um, and we're really proud of it. We still got work to do, obviously. We're going to get that 17th rank back down. Um, but the data don't lie either. Um, and it's been, it's been really exciting. So... Any questions? <laughs> Any of y'all know Michael Jordan, the meme with the, when he's crying? Yeah. It's his eyeballs. Um, who's going to be in the game next year? Who's going to be in the game? Oh, come on, Alan. Yeah. Yes, Georgia, y'all got there. Y'all are awesome. I, we're, I don't know. It's like pulling teeth to get that data. I, I don't know. And the thing is with those, that, that data is literally nothing but fan surveys. And so it when it's good, we're like, this is great. When it's bad, we're like, it's just fan surveys. <laughs> but in all, so it, you're, Troy's right. It's like they don't, fans don't remember what it was like two years ago. They remember what it was like last game. And so, um, but to answer, your, to answer your question in all seriousness, yes, it does change things if it's a blowout, especially if it's a, um, if the Falcons were getting blown out, people are out of there at halftime. People are out of there in the third quarter. So, I mean, we, we can't just, like, disappear for three hours. we gotta be, we got to be on it. we got to be ready. Actually, in our standard operating procedures, we have a whole page devoted to all the checks and balances you have to do during the game to get ready for, for egress. Um, that kind of bit, that bit us a little bit in the very first event at preseason because uh, we did egress. We all celebrated. We're like, we're going to go to CNN Center and just pig out, Chick-fil-A. 
And then it's like, people are leaving in the second quarter. People literally just showed up just to see the stadium and then they left. And so we like had to scramble and get everybody, get everybody back out there. So you, you have to be on your game the whole time. The United Games definitely has more pedestrians. Um, Mike, if I miss it, I mean, Mike is definitely the expert, especially with, with the United Games. Um, United Games has more pedestrians. The, the United fans also just tend to linger more, too, in the area, in the stadium. In the, in, I mean, Falcons, it's, like, it's just pure business. It's in and out. Um, but we're, man we're probably managing more vehicles when it comes to Falcons. I don't have any hard data on that. Um, but I do know that the MARTA lines are, are maxed out. Like that Vine City station that I showed y'all, it's not supposed to handle that amount of pads. It's just not, it's the smallest station in all of MARTA, and it's right next to, the, to what used to be the Donington Stadium. But, you know, they, they get it done. Um, they're trying to work on things from a pedestrian flow perspective that even though those gates are right there to, to get people to go to the, it's still called the Dome, the Dome and World Congress Center and Phillips Arena Station, which is one of the biggest ones in all of MARTA, that can handle the capacity. But, but at the same time, people are wise to that, especially United. They know if they go on that one, they're going to be able to pack out the train that's then going to go to the next station, and all those people are completely left out. So, At the Georgia Dome, only 10% of the volume went to Vine City. Now it's about 35% is going towards Vine City. Yeah, it's, that... it's nuts. Um, United fans are also pretty, pretty daggum rowdy, too. Let me put it that way. They don't, they don't tailgate as much, though. So they they don't, don't tailgate as much. Yeah, they're more like in downtown at the bars and stuff like that. Um, but they're ready to go. <laughs> put it that way. Is anything else I missed, Mike, from a... No, I mean, uh, we've pretty much gotten those 40,000 of any United Games down to about 45, 50 minutes, and then Falcons an hour, 15. Yeah, and if it's a set, so... So, so this definitely go off. Yeah, United, last year they did the two, two of the sellouts, and this year they have one plus four more programs. So those are the 70 plus, so those are on the same level as Falcons. Normally it's only 40,000, but it's still, it's still a decent-sized crowd. Anything else? All right, y'all. Thank you very much. Thank you much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you guys for coming. Just a couple quick reminders. ITS 5C Summit. Look for the registration coming out. Trivia tomorrow night. And if you guys have any abstracts, go ahead and submit those. And we'll see you next month, April 25th.